So Bitcoin and crypto have had an interesting start to 2021. After rocketing from $29,000 at the start of the year, up to $64,000 in mid-April, Bitcoin has since struggled. And the big question is this, is the drop in Bitcoin's price a sign that we're now entering a bear market? Or is this a mid-cycle dip before Bitcoin climbs even higher? So in this video, we explore this question by hearing the analysis of one of the most respected analysts and investors in crypto, Willy Wu. We'll hear his thoughts and look at some of the underlying data to give us better insight. So I'm not gonna make you wait. Instead, let's just jump straight into this first clip. For you, what are you looking for to determine whether, you know, when we'll uh, flip back to a bull market or, or do you think we already are? And um, going forward, uh, why don't we say uh, August and then end of year, what would be your price predictions for those two moments in time? Yeah, very similar. The structure is not bearish. Um, if this is a bear market, it's the weirdest, <laughs> weirdest darn uh, bear market I've ever seen. Um, and if it keeps dropping from here, like it's like, what's wrong with this network? Is it broken? <laughs> it's um, we're very, we're very oversold. Um, these people joining, we, um, you know, we haven't even dropped from a high mania phase, which is very consistent for bear markets. They they end in a, they end with a bull market pop, and then we we have to revisit fundamentals. Yeah, we were already at fundamentals when this thing sold off. So um, I think that we'll rebound um, relatively well soonish. Um, and I don't think it's going to be multi multi months longer than two months. Um, but you know anything can happen in these markets. Um, yeah, I think that we'll we'll we'll, we'll climb back up. Um, with I'm, I'm pretty confident that no, there's nothing in the data that shows me this is this is um, serious. Um, you know the most bearish thing I can find on the network is that capital was moved um, out of the network in terms of realized cap, which is you know good metric on how much mm. is stored there. And so that's dipped quite a bit. And I haven't seen that before in the middle of the bull market. Um, so there was some significant sell-offs. Um, but can it just remind listeners what realized cap means? It's it's a sum of all um, all the coins sitting in wallets at the price that investors paid um, for those mm -hmm. coins. Um, so that's dropped. That means that people sold higher up, and now um, realize cap is no longer capturing a higher value of those those extra high coins. And this is one of the things that typically rises very easily, and very seldom does it drop. And and, and it has dropped at a level which um, is consistent of a start of a bear market. Um, but once again, there's, it does not agree with um, some much more telling metrics like um, the number of new entities that we're seeing on the network and the number of users coming on board some of the companies that um, I have the data on. Uh, so the, yeah, the customers are coming in, new users are coming in, that's a bull market. Um, it's just a matter of when um, those coins will be uh, uh, reabsorbed and bought and held. Um, which and so yeah. if you were going to give your August and end of year price predictions, what would those be? Oh, August is tough, but like um, I'm looking at, you know, I have a model which is just um, a moving average of, um, you know, the market cap and you tweak it a little. Um, it captures all the tops um, in history. It probably won't catch this one because everyone's looking at it now. <laughs> um, but uh, that's that was prior to this this crash. Um, that was starting to look like it was winding up to three, four, even five hundred thousand dollars near the end of this year. Now it's starting to reduce its trajectory. Um, looks like it'll comfortably reach two hundred to. 200 it might reach 300 but we have to see how that, that develops so first off willie does not think this is a bear market he believes this is a mid-cycle dip and bitcoin could rebound soon in fact he thinks this could be as soon as the next two months and he even goes on to share his price prediction of 200k to 300k by the end of this year which would then mark the end of the current cycle now I know what you're thinking. This sounds like hopium, right? So let's hand it back over to Willie so he can share the underlying data and the models that he's using 
to form this opinion. Willie, obviously you're well known for the NVT ratio. Um, why mm -hmm. don't you remind the listeners how you define that and tell us what it's currently indicating? Okay, so um, you know most people are familiar with price earnings ratio in stocks, and um, Bitcoin doesn't really have. It's not a company. It doesn't have earnings. Um, it, what it does have is it's a pure store of value network. So what it does have is um, volumes of um, Bitcoin moving between investors. So you can measure the value moving between investors as as how active that network is um, as a as an investment network, and you can run a ratio to its um, network value, the market cap, and that's essentially NVT ratio. It's the price earnings for Bitcoin. Um, you can, you know, it's a fundamental equation. You can put it down on first principles, and um, you can show that price earnings of Bitcoin, which is NVT multiplied by the volume, um, that oscillates. That gives you a evaluation for Bitcoin, um, just like you you might say this company has a Forex multiplier from its price earnings, this category of company. And so you can go, okay, let's see what earnings it does. And okay, the valuation is four times. Um, so um, that is that is essentially what you can do with um, NVT. And um, NVT is that, that pure ratio, like a price earnings. You can multiply it by the volume um, and the long-standing volume, like the median, and um, you can map it back to the price domain. And um, so it gives us a very nice kind of trace of where the value should be based on the investment volume um, going through the network between um, individual investors. And currently that sits at $55,000, um, even though we were not long ago in the low 30s. Um, it's, it's in a historic band of undervaluation. Um, and I notice, um, you know, Plan B's um, pretty well-known stock-to-flow ratio, another fundamental based on the scarcity um, dynamics of the network. Um, that's that's currently at sixty-five thousand dollars. So those two are pretty much in um, the higher agreement of between fifty-five and sixty-five thousand uh, dollars. And also, if you look at how far the price is currently deviated from that that metric it's it's also in a band where it's um all-time undervaluation um when you look back on the history so one of the major things people always try to do with bitcoin is value it people ask the question what is the fundamental value of bitcoin unlike stocks or real estate it doesn't produce income so you can't use something like a pe ratio instead it is more like gold but there are two metrics that investors use to value bitcoin and i have to say historically these have both been remarkably accurate the first that Willie mentions is the NVT price. Now, to keep it simple, the NVT price takes how active Bitcoin's network is, i.e. how much value is being transacted on it, and attempts to create a fundamental price on this basis. Now, as Bitcoin is first and foremost a payment network, it makes sense that it should be worth more as more people use it and as more value is transacted on it. And of course, less if fewer people are using it and less value flows on it. Well, on this chart here, we can see three lines. First, the blue line. This is simply the price of Bitcoin. The green line, this is what the price should be according to the NVT calculation. As we can see, while these lines have historically diverged at various points, there is a clear correlation between the two over the past few years. And finally, this pink line at the bottom, this shows us where the Bitcoin is under or overvalued based on the NVT price. As we can see, for pretty much the first time in Bitcoin's history, the NVT price today indicates the Bitcoin should be valued higher than it currently is. Today, Bitcoin's price sits around $38,000, while this model implies Bitcoin should be around 55,000. And this chart is the second that Willie mentions. It is called the stock to flow ratio. Now, roughly every four years, the number of newly mined Bitcoin drops by 50%. This is why Bitcoin is slowly trending to its final supply of 21 million. This analysis attempts to take this supply change over time and create a price prediction. Again, while this price prediction isn't perfectly accurate, with it going all the way back to 2010, 
It's shocking how consistently close Bitcoin's price has actually been to this prediction model. Well, today, this model is predicting Bitcoin should be around 65,000. Again, much higher than Bitcoin's current price. Now, I have to be honest, I worked in crypto full time for four years and I don't love price prediction models. I think they have their place and I'll hold my hands up and admit that these models have been much more accurate than I would have ever expected over the past few years. For me personally though, I prefer to focus on the fundamentals of supply and demand. The fundamentals that ultimately drive Bitcoin's price. I won't go into those again here because it would take quite a while, but if you would like a reminder, I've recorded this video, which should be somewhere up here, so you can learn more about where the demand for Bitcoin comes from outside of just speculating on the price. Now, a really interesting question. If Bitcoin is still in a long-term bull market, why does it not look like it is? Let's hand it back over to Willie. So, uh, yeah, I mean, something that confuses me a little is if we're at this moment where Bitcoin is, you know, quite well undervalued um, historically, and yet at the same time, we're at this moment where, you know, there's this huge amount sitting in stable coins, um, then why aren't we starting to see kind of the beginnings of a more bullish market? Or maybe we are and, and um, you know, I, I'm just not aware that that's what you're thinking. Yeah, I, I actually think that we're in a, um, you know, a post capitulation, um, reaccumulation of coins. So, so many whales dumped out, um, and it will take a bit of time for those coins to be reaccumulated. And I, I think once the price action starts to tip, um, properly bullish, so maybe a little bit of sideways and the price action starts to look good. I think a lot of those stable coins, um, will come back in. And um, I like all these metrics are telling me is like we are very overextended in in the sell down. And um, historically, when we are um, below these fundamentals, the recovery is quite quick. Um, the only times where the recovery is slow um, tends to be when the price was way above fundamentals, and it's taken a long time for the price to come back down and recover. Um, so. Um, I think the time to, a lot of this is telling me the time to recovery is um, going to be faster than um, maybe what we saw in 2019. It took months after that 6,000 to 3,000 um, drop. Um, and I think it'll be a lot like um, the White Swan crash in, in 2020. Um, we dropped below fundamentals there and we recovered in a matter of um, about eight weeks, I think. So there you have it. The underlying data and models indicate that Bitcoin could simply be in a mid-cycle dip. For me though, I'm really not so bothered about what happens in the short term. I've been in crypto for years and I've been so fortunate to see the incredible innovation that has taken place. Someday in the future, we will be talking about how it's crazy to think how banking worked before decentralized finance connected the world. The same way it's crazy to think of a world today pre-internet. However, to see that play out will likely take decades, not years and certainly not months. As a result, when I invest, it's for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. It is not for the next few months. But I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Do you think crypto is in a mid-cycle dip or do you think this is the beginning of the bear market? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon.